In today's lesson, we'll be going over G150 pocket milling. Uh, G150 is a can cycle, and it obviously it makes pockets. So this here is what a G150 would look like in your program. You have all these values, all these beautiful values that you can have, um, and we'll be going over every value and what it means. So here we have a P, your P value. That is the number of the subprogram. Uh, now just remember. Uh, you have to have a subprogram. You can't have a subroutine with a G150. Uh, your F, that is your feed rate. Your D, that is your tool diameter offset selection. Uh, and then you have an I or a J. Uh, your I is your X axis cut increment, and your J is your Y axis cut increment, meaning if you want to be cutting in the X or if you want to be cutting in the Y. Uh, with the I or J, you can only have one, though. You can't have both. So you either call up your I or you either call up your J. Then you have your K, which is your finished cut allowance. Then you have your Q, which is your incremental Z axis cut depth or pass. So how deep will it be going every cut? Uh, then you have your R, which is your R plane position. Then you have your X and your Y, and that is the position of your starting hole. So a lot of times when you uh, have your pocket, you, uh, you put a starting hole uh, like in the center of the pocket, or where the pocket's going to be, and then that's where your um, your mill was when it comes in to start doing the pocket. We'll actually start milling it out. But if you have a center cutting end mill, you do not need to have a starting hole. Um, I repeat, if you have a center cutting end mill, you do not need a starting end mill. But if you don't have a center cutting end mill, you need to have a starting hole. Your Z, which is your final depth of uh, of the pockets. And you have your L and your S, and that's um, these are like, very optional. That's why I have them in the little brackets up here. Um, L is your optional repetition count, so that if you have um, more than one pocket that you're doing, you can uh, use the L. And you have S, which is your optional spindle speed. Uh, the optional spindle speed is nice because let's say you're using the same mill to profile your part, and after you're done profiling your part, then you come over to do your pocket. And let's say you're uh, profile, um, when you're profiling your part, you have a different spindle speed. And then when it comes time to uh, do your pocket here, you have a different spindle speed than what you had for profiling your part. So you can change your spindle speed, which is quite nice. Um, really quick, with your Q and your Z, um, let's say I made the final depth of my uh, pocket uh, 500 thousandths, and I made my Q uh, 100 thousandths. Uh, it's going to take five passes to get... Uh, to my final depth. So it's going to take a hundred thou every time it goes, ar uh, goes around and does my pocket. But now let's say I made my Q value like 200 thousandths, so point 0.2. Uh, my first two, and I still keep, I keep my Z depth at 500 thousandths, so point 0.5. It's first two cuts, or th uh, first two passes through, it's going to take the, uh, the Q value of 200 thousandths, but it's last cut, it's going to take a hundred thousandths. Because the first two, that'll get you down to 400 thousandths in depth. In the last cut, it's going to take a hundred thousandths to get down to your final Z depth. You don't have to worry about the machine not knowing that its final cut isn't going to be your Q value. The machine is smart. Remember that. <laughs> so, and some other key pointers here. Uh, if you're going to be using uh, a starter hole, you make sure you drill that hole first before you actually do your G150. Uh, you want a sub-program, a sub-program, remember, you do not want a subroutine. It can't be a subroutine. Um, your sub-program has to be less than 40 strokes. And then, remember, within your sub-program, that when you're making your pocket definition, that you close your pocket definition. Um, it is possible to have an island within your pocket, but I'll go over that in a different video. So now I'm going to give you an example of what a program would look like using a G150. All right, as you can see here, I have a program using uh, the G150. Um, I'll be showing you the, blow, uh, the blueprint here. Uh, once we go down to the sub-program, uh, I will not be doing a starting hole. Uh, so here, get the program name, uh, calling up tool 9, uh, then I got uh, my G90, Absolute, G50, G54, which is my work coordinate system. Got my G00 wrapping to this X and Y location. Uh, turning on my spindles. 
Uh, got my G43, which is my tool height compensation, calling up the right tool here with the H value, and then wrapping down to a Z of uh, 0.1. Then I got my G150. Um, it has all the values here that we went over here on the on the whiteboard. I'm going to uh, got my G41, which is my uh, cutter comp, uh, calling out the program, uh, my subprogram right here. Got my feed rate, got the diameter uh, for my tool. Doing my J, which is my is a y-axis cut increment of two hundred thousandths. Uh, got K. Uh, which is my finish cut allowance, uh, 10 thousandths. Got my Q, which is my incremental Z axis cut depth per pass at 100 thou. Uh, got my R plane set at zero. Then I have X, which is uh, 2.5 and Y of 2. And that is uh, where I'll be starting while my tools start instead of having my, uh, my starting hole. And then I have an overall depth here of. Uh, 200 thou, which is called out by the Z. So then after the G150, we'll go down to the sub-program. And this is my makeshift blueprint here. It's, uh, I made it on Microsoft Word. It is not too uh, well here. Um, couldn't make my arrows here straight for some reason. But anyways, you get the point, the center point of this pocket is uh, over two and a half inches in the X and two inches up in the Y and got this dimension here of three inches and this dimension here of two inches so here I got my uh, for the sub-program here I got the program name um, then I got a G01 and a Y of three so my tool is starting here and then it will be going at a controlled movement up to Y of three and I'll be going over to an X of one down to a Y of one over to an X of four and then up to Y of 3 and then closing the loop remember this is very important that you close your loop in your pocket over to an X of 2.5 and then I got my M99 which is sending me back to the main program um, also too I'm moving in absolute dimensioning here you are allowed to do incremental dimensioning here if you'd like okay so now I'm back to the main program I did the G150 now I got my G40 in the next block of code here, which is canceling cutter comp. Then I got my G01, now control straight line movement to this XY coordinate at a feed rate of 10 inches per minute. Then I got my G00 wrapping up to one inch. Then M05 turning off my spindle, G28 sending the machine home, and then M30 resetting the program. So I'm out here in the shop. I got the program that we just went over, uh, uploaded onto the machine here, uh, both the main program and the sub program. Uh, I got my stock loaded, we'll be using a 3 8 uh, end mill. Uh, time to let you guys watch the program run and see what it's capable of.
we have the G150. Uh, we have a pocket mill. Nice, beautiful pocket there. The finish on it isn't all that great, but um, G150 is a great G code to know, uh, especially if, uh, when you're using Haas machines. Um, just remember, uh, speeds and feeds play a big role in your finish and how the pocket turns out. Uh, here, I, I go, go relatively slow because I don't have coolant, and two, uh, I'm doing it for demonstration purposes, so time to me really isn't a big factor for me here at school, I'm here when I'm teaching you. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, hope you have a great rest of your day.